evening or afternoon or morning, depending on whatever you're watching this. Welcome to another exciting session. Today we're going to be talking about medical cannabis and CBD for better vision, hence our CannaVision t-shirts. So I'm really, really excited about uh, tonight's session because uh, medical cannabis, CBD, as most of you guys know, is getting a lot of popularity. There's a lot of interest. Um, there's a lot of research being done, especially in countries like Israel, um, a lot in Europe as well. The United States is starting to catch up with, with, uh, with research. The problem is it's still scheduled, um, is you know, federally illegal, so that prohibits or really reduces the, the opportunities for a lot of, goal, a lot of medical research studies uh, in, in, done in the United States. So right now we really have to look abroad and overseas for a lot of the research um, on the subject. So I'm gonna be show, sharing some of that with you this, this, uh, this evening when we go over this stuff. But uh, there's so many applications and, and let's just get into it. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, you can comment down in the uh, in the box. Or again, if you're not comfortable, you have something pretty personal, uh, feel free to reach out to me or my staff. Um, see you guys coming on in here. That's awesome. So let me hit a screen share here and pull up my presentation. And let's get this going. All right. So slideshow. From beginning, from beginning, let me move this up so you guys can see. Fantastic. So again, as promised, tonight's conversation and presentation is on CBD. Ooh, that's running by itself. Uh, ah, we'll, we'll air there. So <laughs> CBD and medical cannabis for ophthalmic support, right? We're talking about the specific uses of CBD uh, for eye issues. How does it actually support your vision? Um, and then we're also going to talk about a little bit more broad spectrum or uh, a larger range of conditions that uh, things like CBD medical cannabis can, can help with. The first thing we want to talk about is the endocannabinoid system. Let me move this up here a little bit so you guys can see. So the endocannabinoid system is an actual system in our bodies, guys. They fairly recently discovered the system. And I'm not sure, uh, not a lot of people are, are familiar with this or understand it. It's just like your endocrine system, like your circulatory system, the nervous system, the lymphatic system. It's a system in our body. So human endocannabinoid system, it's a network of receptors that spread throughout our whole body uh, that control a lot of the biological processes, some of which include immune function, immune response, sleep, the circadian rhythms and the, 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 our sleep cycles that we have, uh, mood, right? It helps regulate mood, uh, memory, right? It actually helps with cognitive function and pain, regulation of pain signals throughout the body. We're going to talk more specifically how that actually works, what the mechanism of action is, all right? So the endocannabinoid system, I wanted to have you guys a little bit of a closer look here without getting too biomedical and too, uh, you know, uh, patho, pathological and anatomy and physiology. We're just going to go uh, light here, as, as light as I can. But uh, if you guys are interested in it, there's a lot on the internet. I definitely urge you, if you're interested in this subject, there's a lot of YouTube videos that really take a deep dive that can help you understand the endocannabinoid system. Now, as a side note, uh, about six months ago, maybe a little bit more, maybe eight months ago, I did a uh, medical cannabis training through an institute called Pacific College of Oriental Medicine, where I went to, to school originally, where I, I uh, learned acupuncture and Chinese medicine. So last year, they offered a training uh, actually given by the, the Nurses Association. The American Nurses Association has a department that focuses on uh, training people about medical cannabis. So I completed that that education about six to eight months ago. And a lot of the information I'm going to share with you guys is is come out of that that uh, certification that I did. So um, I'm not just I've done a lot of research on this over oh, empirical research on my own over the past with patients. Say maybe two three years, my my interest has really increased because of the amount of patients I had uh, that have been using. 
uh, medical cannabis and, and CBD, some using recreationally. So I wanted to know how, what the impact was on the body, good, the bad, the ugly. So let's start looking at the endocannabinoid system so you guys have a little bit better understanding of what this system is actually. So the endocannabinoid system, like the nervous system, works on receptor sites, okay? Receptor sites are basically like, you know, you have a start and a finish and, and a jump. So receptor means to receive. So the information or the chemicals or the cannabinoid received by these, these, these receptor sites. So they are receptors, they're part of the endocannabinoid system, which impact the physiological process affecting, again, things like pain modulation, memory we talked about before, appetite, right? A lot of the times people have voracious appetites, you know, you want to control your appetite. So it reduces appetite for some people who are like trying to lose weight um, or have up just issues where their appetites are like really strong uh, inappropriately. Uh, also can stimulate appetite. Again, people who have low appetites either due to stress or going through things like chemotherapy or certain occasions can reduce the appetite. Uh, medical cannabis, CBD, uh, these types of, of, of uh, products can actually help stimulate the appetite. People with the hyperactivity, uh, they need to increase the appetite and then reduce it for people who have a hyperactivity of appetite where they're just constantly hungry and is uh, they're either causing digestive stress, putting weight on, stuff like that. So it's very, very good for regulating appetite. Um, we all know we're going to talk a lot about the anti-inflammatory effects, which is probably the most well-known parts. Uh, also, relaxation, anxiety, and insomnia. Those are also uh, common uh, things that people know that CD and medical cannabis are used for, um, also called medical marijuana. So, uh, and we also know that it can, it can regulate the immune system. And by regulation, I mean, so if you have a hyperactive immune system for things like autoimmune processes, right, where the immune system is overactive and, you know, attacking its own body parts and, you know, things like, uh, you know, arthritis and autoimmune thyroid and a lot of the autoimmune eye conditions like retinitis pigmentosa, some of the autoimmune optic nerve issues or autoimmune brain or uh, things like immune skin issues like psoriasis and eczema. So these conditions, it reduces and modulates and kind of suppresses a little bit the immune system when it's overactive and we have all this inflammation on. Likewise, it can stimulate a weakened immune system. How do I know that? I, my constitutionally forever, I've always had a very weak immune system. Those of you guys who've uh, heard me lecture on cannabis before, you may have heard me mention this earlier. So I was pretty good for like, one flu and maybe four, three or four colds a year. Since I started taking uh, cannabis products to CBD over the past two years, I haven't gotten sick. I haven't even got a sniffle, which, you know, knock on wood, I want to jinx myself. But I, uh, I haven't gotten sick. And the only different thing that I, I did was start taking CBD. So I had no idea that, that CBD is really that, that beneficial for the immune function. So for me, um, I am loving that I haven't, you know, had a cold uh, or like bronchitis or, you know, I'm usually good for, for at least one of those uh, big hits and then a couple other little colds. So that's my own like anecdotal experience that I'm sharing with you guys. Um, back to the endocannabinoid system. So we have these receptor sites, right? There's two types of receptors that are known right now. Um, and again, we are not saying at all, we know anything and everything there is to about the endocannabinoid system because we are not there yet. This is new territory that we're just starting to, to understand and research, folks. So as of right now, we've identified two types of cannabinoid receptor sites, and CB is for cannabinoids. So we have the CB1 receptor sites and the CB2 receptor sites. Now, the CB1 receptor sites are primarily found in the brain and the central nervous system. So that's the brain, the spine, the optic nerve, the retina, and the eyes, okay? Because we know the uh, central nervous system is composed of the spine, the brain, and the eyes. So still in the peripheral tissue, but uh, to a lesser degree. So all you need to know is higher concentrations of CB1 receptor sites are found in the brain. We're gonna talk a little bit more of the relevance of that in a few. Um, so CBD doesn't directly fit into CB1 or CB2 receptor sites. Um, 
but they have these these indirect effects that are being studied right now. So it's kind of like a lock and key theory, which again, if you guys want to know more, I don't want to get too into that because it might confuse some of you guys, but if you want to learn more about that, I highly recommend you can do some YouTube or do some, some Google searches and stuff like that. There's a lot of like visuals and audios and um, you know things that'll help educate yourself. Um, but for the CB2 receptor sites, we know that those are mostly found in the peripheral organs and peripheral tissues, especially in the cells associated with the immune system. They're also highly concentrated in the digestive system, okay? So CB1 receptor sites think central nervous system. CB2 receptor sites think gut and immune system and the peripheral nervous system, okay? So it's just going to be important. We talk about that. And again, these receptor sites receive the endocannabinoids that are found in the body and the phytocannabinoids or plant-based cannabinoids that we're going to get externally from plants such as hemp in cannabis. Okay, we're good? <laughs> you guys are doing great. Now, here is a, a visual I wanted to give you guys. It's very busy. There's a lot going on here. Um, but what I wanted to show you here is all the areas in the body that we have um, concentrations of CBD receptor sites. Again, both CB1 receptor sites and CB2 receptor sites. So all the one receptor sites are located in the cells. Again, we see the brain. If we look over here towards the left, we see the brain, the CNS, the spinal cord, right? The, the cortical regions of the brain, the neocortex, uh, the hippocampus, the amygdala the cerebellum, the brainstem, right? The basal ganglia, um, the thalamus, the olfactory bulb. So uh, the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, the upper airways, the liver, right? The liver, this is in, man, you, it really helps. It's very, very important. The liver is, has a lot to do with the endocannabinoid system. Why? Because cannabinoids are fat-based lipid base. So anything in the body that's produced the fat based in the body or taken externally uh, that's fat based or lipid based uh, is, is broken down and utilized through the liver, right? Water soluble stuff through the kidney. So also in the adrenal glands, the, the ovaries and the testes, the uterus. So even things like reproductive issues can be very closely linked to dysregulation of the endocannabinoid system. Um, then we look over to the other side here. I'm kind of blocking it over here, but CB1 and CB2 receptor sites, if you guys could see, oh, this is really, like, really important for you guys to see here, but it's in the eyes, uh, CB1 and CB2 receptor sites are in the RPE, retinal pigment epithelium in the RPE cells. So very, very important that you see it there. Also, CB1, CB2 are in the stomach, the heart, the pancreas, uh, the digestive tract the bones, a lot of it in the bones. Um, and we have non-CB1, non-CB2 uh, are located in the cells of the blood vessels, all right? So that's just the general, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, receptors found in, in the blood vessels. CB2 receptors are also tremendously found in the lymphatic system, in the immune system. So again, that's why they, we know that uh, CBD and, and um, Medical cannabis can be extremely useful for uh, diseases like cancer or immune systems because it really helps tonify and regulate the lymphatics, the detox pathways in the body. And we know in cases like lymphoma or um, lymphatic drainage problems or even like cancers, there's a dysregulation of the lymphatic system. So uh, really, really effective with that. Spleen, thymus, the tonsils, again, we, as we know, it's part of the, the immune system, uh, the blood. So again, Long and short, I just want you guys to be aware that the concentration of CB1 receptors are primarily in the brain, and then we have these other air peripheral areas of the bodies where we have CB2 and or CB1 receptor sites as well, okay? Again, this is like a really quick and dirty overview on the cannabinoid system. Um, if you, again, if you guys are interested, please, please, please uh, take it upon yourselves to self-educate. I don't want to spend too much time, um, you know, just because of for interest and time purposes. But um, very, very interesting, interesting new uh, bio, biological information going on with the endocannabinoid system. So let's move on, shall we? So this part I wanted to show you guys, we mentioned earlier that the cannabinoid receptor sites, both CB1 and CB2 receptor sites are found in the retina, right? Specifically the RPE. 
So cannabinoid CB1 receptors in the retina are, have scientifically, have been scientifically proven rather, uh, and found in the retina. So the retina is a tremendous, tremendous, uh, tremendously populated area of uh, cannabinoid or endocannabinoid receptors. So the yellow arrows over here that you guys can see, uh, they show the cone particles where the rod spicules stain demonstrating the CB1 receptor sites, okay? So we see here, we see here. So there is an abundance of CB receptor sites in the retina. And that's very relevant because we know if there is a deficiency or a decrease or a lack of uh, cannabinoids, either endocannabinoids produced in the body or phytocannabinoids that are delivered through taking uh, plant-based medicines that are delivered to the retina and the brain, because we know the brain is part of the visual system, it could impact your vision, okay? So too little endocannabinoid activity or lack of reception of the endocannabinoids. So either you have a couple things going on. Either there's insufficiency of endocannabinoids in the body or the receptor sites are dysfunctional. So we have one of those two problems. Usually the receptor sites are in pretty good shape. They just kind of like hang out and they're just not fed for a while. So sometimes they go dormant, okay? When you introduce cannabinoids to the body, uh, either again, finally you're stimulating the body's own endogenous production of, of endocannabinoids, what happens is they come alive again. They wake up just like the cell dormancy model and the vision will start to improve because the retinal cells are going to spring into action. All righty? So this I wanted to show you guys as well because uh, science matters, uh, research matters. And a lot of people are like, well, there's no research on, you know, stuff like that. Um, we need to see more research. There is. And here's six studies that I'm just, just pulled out that I, I wanted to give you guys. Um, again, you could do Google Scholar. Whoops, jumping back here. We can do Google Scholar. Um, you can go on to um, uh, any of the medical uh, clinical trials, doc up to find any of this stuff. Um, unfortunately, there are a little older studies. We haven't had any recently, again, for reason discussed earlier. Uh, in the United States, cannabis is still uh, you know, considered a Schedule One drug. Uh, hopefully that'll change soon because there are a lot of medicinal values. Schedule One means there's no medicinal value, all right? So we know there is, and we know that's not true. It's just gonna take a while for the government to kind of move past that because uh, in, basically in the 30s is when uh, basically the laws were created uh, classifying medical cannabis. And again, you guys can find more about that if you wanna do some research. But again, here are research studies that shows cannabis improves night visions in case of dark adaptation and scotopic sensitivity. Um, so yeah, right here is evidence showing that improves night vision and dark adaptation for people uh, like dealing with retinitis pigmentosa, Usher syndrome, optic nerve atrophy, diabetic retinopathy, all these conditions where the night vision is affected. Look guys, even aging, I hear from patients all the time that are like 40s, 50s, like, yeah, you know, I'm driving, my night vision's not so good. CBD is one way that we can help improve our, our night vision. So the second study here is the future of cannabis and cannabinoids therapeutics. There's a, there's a whole uh, you know it's nine page published research study talking about the future of cannabis and its therapeutics, which have a huge there's like four pages inside the study that talk about specific retinal and ophthalmic applications. Then we have another study that talks about the endocannabinoid system in the retina, the entire system. This is a huge study. When I did my capstone. This is one of the major studies that I used for my capstone because I had so much amazing information on the entire mechanism, mechanism of action and how the, where the receptor sites and the function, everything is fascinating. If you're not interested, I geek out on this stuff. So to me, it's fascinating. Maybe it doesn't for you and that's great. Um, so let me move forward. We say the human eye expressed high levels of CB1 cannabinoid receptors with messenger RNA and protein. Uh, the next one talking about ophthalmological, ophthalmological, there, we said it, a segment of cannabis-induced persisting perception disorder. So it basically shows these, we're getting more specific with conditions of how uh, CBD medical cannabis, the endocannabinoids can help. So 
Uh, then we go on, we see a localization of cannabinoid CB1 receptor in the human anterior part of the eye. So now we're saying not only is it in the posterior, like we just finished talking about, the, the retina and the optic nerve in the brain, more the posterior compartment in the visual system, the neuro neurological part of the, the visual system that has these CB receptor sites, specifically the CB1 receptor sites. But now research was showing that the anterior part of the eye, right? The anterior compartment is the sclera, the lens, um, the, the iris, uh, you know, the, the whole front part of the eye, the structures, the pupil that also have the, the ciliary muscles that move the eye that have um, you know, significant amount of CB receptor rights as well. So that comes into play for things like presbyopia, maybe cataracts, uveitis. And again, we're going to talk more about the conditions, but it shows that it's not only useful for, which I originally thought was for neurological conditions, but more meta metabolic uh, conditions in the, the eye that are not necessarily neurologically based. We can see uh, absolute uh, possibility for, for, for aid and assistance in and managing those types of conditions. So as we know, this is a little bit of a review. Uh, some of you guys know this, some of you guys don't. So let's look at the current biomedical treatment for DVL means degenerative vision loss. That's my little thing that I use. So we know for some of these conditions, there is limited or no conventional biomedical treatment, right? Uh, certainly for like glaucoma, cataracts, um, you know, there, for presbyopia, myopia, you can do uh, surgeries, corrective surgeries, uh, but for a lot of conditions, guys, there's not much available right now. Certainly retinitis pigmentosa, Stargardt's, Usher's, um, myopic degeneration, uh, lattice degeneration, optic neuritis, optic nerve atrophy, um, even wet macular degeneration. There's, there's no medical treatment. Wet macular degeneration, you could have injections, glaucoma, surgery, certainly eye drops to keep the pressure under control. But there's not a whole heck of a lot, especially for the neurological conditions. So we know stem cell therapy is still in the works. They're still working on that. Um, we've seen, unfortunately, see some cases where it's actually made conditions worse. Uh, I, have a, I have actually two patients who are very who work with the, the FFB, uh, and they told me that three studies last year were actually shut down mid-study because people were actually losing vision. And I think it was had to, there was like uh, some some issue with the injections going on. And again, I don't know all the specifics on that, but um, uh, I do have you know uh, some some connections to people who are involved in the research field. So and I've also had patients myself uh, who have done the the stem cell injections lose a lot of vision. So unfortunately, stem cell is not showing. They've been working on it for 25 years, although there is tremendous application for stem cell therapy for traumatic injuries. Um, Certainly there, there's use value for that, but for degenerative conditions like uh, eye conditions, like we were talking about, oops. So uh, con conditions like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia they were looking at, uh, obviously eye conditions like glaucoma, we didn't really see much change. So unfortunately, I mean, may maybe, you know, we're still hopeful that, that that may change, but right now it's, you know, it just hasn't looked too good and hasn't been too promising. Um, gene therapy, I'm still very optimistic about. I just think that, you know, uh, studies like the CRISPR is just kind of in its infancy. So I do think gene therapy is, is going to be um, extremely effective for a lot of these conditions. We're just not quite there yet. Probably needs a another decade or two at least of, of research. What I am really excited about is biotechnology, uh, specifically like the artificial retina, uh, the Argus, which is in its early stage. Guys, biotechnology, for those of you guys who don't know, has like taken on this exponential run. Um, it's just unbelievable the rate at which uh, biotechnology and robotics and nanotechnology has taken off. So I don't gamble much, but if I did, I would probably put my money on the future of this type of stuff um, in robotics, biotics, bi you know, bionics, um, tech, uh, nanotechnology, stuff like that. I think that is going to end up being uh, our best bet from a biomedical standpoint. But until then, guys, even things like gene therapy and stem cell therapy, uh, the, the word on the street in the research labs is that, hey, you got to preserve vision because at best, things like gene therapy and stem cell therapy are only going to preserve vision. They're not going to recover dead nerve tissue because you can't. Um, 
So which, which we know acupuncture and other therapies we're doing is, is ju just as effective at. You know, it helps recover whatever vision we can and helps you keep what you got. So um, those of you guys who've seen this, the, the presentations on acupuncture, you can uh, review those and we're, we're de definitely gonna have more conversations on those. Um, and of course, there's risk of accelerated vision loss if you sit and do nothing, right? The no plan plan is not the best plan. Although you're, you know, everybody's entitled to do that. Um, it's your eyes, it's your life. Uh, doing nothing, not taking supplements, not doing eye exercises, not uh, you know, taking care of your body, managing stress. Uh, these things, it's not, it's, you know, not smoke, reducing smoking, alcohol, stuff like that. Uh, anything that's gonna create stress on your vision, we recommend at least taking a systemic uh, approach, a holistic approach to improving health, to improve vision. But again, not making any changes and uh, doing the same thing is gonna create the same results. So again, we talked about ophthalmic acupuncture and electrotherapies like alternating current stimulation, microcurrent, uh, TES, transelectrocorneal stimulation, transorbital stimulation. These are all things we do in our clinic. Um, a lot of, lot of promise there. They're not invasive, uh, they're safe, they're effective, and they just, we know they get great results. We've done studies with these through Johns Hopkins University, through Nova, Nova Southeastern University. I created and developed these protocols used in the research studies and without question, they've shown to be uh, quite effective and quite, quite useful for these patients. Of course, again, uh, supplements, diet, exercise, um, improving circulation, uh, regulating the immune system play major important roles for uh, conditions like retinitis pigmentosa, uh, macular generation, um, glaucoma, so on and so forth. So MedCan is, is the term I use for medical cannabis. So you may see my, my abbreviations there. So how does it work? What does it actually do for your vision? What's the benefit? Like what's in it for you, right? Because that's what we're here for. Um, so we know it may help slow progression of neurodegenerative vision loss. I have seen that. I've been using patients, this with patients, oh man, uh, sensitive screen today. So we know it helps slow the progression of neurodegeneration and vision loss. So it, it, it does that, all right? So uh, it improves night vision, we just talked about that, and it can improve adaptation. So people with things like retinitis pigmentosa, we, uh, there's, there's problems in Usher patients with Usher syndromes, so they go outside or inside, and when they go inside, most of us, our vision adapts really quickly. If you have those conditions, you know somebody has those conditions, you know, it takes them a long time for their eyes to adapt to a dimmer lit environment. So what uh, CBD and uh, a cannabis and medical cannabis can help improve this night vision. It opens the visual fields and it also helps with this adaptation, uh, th that function. We know that it also helps control inflammation. Everything I'm putting here is evidence-based. This stuff has been researched and you guys are welcome again to go to Medscape or you can go to Google Scholar, um, do your research, clinicaltrials.gov and look for this information. We know that uh, CBD is also neuroprotective. It protects the retinal cells, the optic nerve, the brain, the entire visual system. We know it's a very, very powerful antioxidant that protects the eyes against oxidative stress. You guys know you've been following me for the past you know, years or at least last couple weeks or months. We know that circulation, inflammation, oxidative stress are some of the three biggest factors that drive progressive division loss, vision loss, accelerate progressive vision loss. So we know that cannabis can help. It can even prevent dry macular generation. This is really cool new research. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a few. It can help prevent uh, the, the advancement of dry macular generation to wet macular generation because it stops the neovascularization, new blood vessel growth. Uh, we also have seen evidence clinically through our OCT tests and our fundus exam that it actually helps reduce bleeding and reduces uh, macular and retinal edema. That's fluid that builds up in the eyes. So cases like CSR, central serous retinopathy, and CME found in cases like Stargardt's, I'm sorry, yeah, sometimes Stargardt's uh, Usher syndrome and retinitis pigmentosa, where you have these fluid-filled sacs on the retina, little cysts of fluid. You know, we've seen dramatic decreases in that uh, very rapidly, uh, in fact. So um, the uh, benefits of CBD, this is actually uh, 
what I did for my capstone for one, for one of the classes. This is a, a PowerPoint that I put together and this is a um, poster that we had this put together, uh, really outlining uh, in sim pretty in simple terms, the benefits of CBD for age-related macular degeneration, cannabis. So again, over here to the left, we talk about what is age-related macular degeneration. Those of you guys know uh, or know somebody have it, it's pretty much the progressive vision loss of the central vision, the acuity. So basically people, they can't read and they can't recognize faces. This whole central vision uh, starts to distort. There's holes and waviness and distortion. Um, and what happens in macular degeneration is accumulation of what's called drusen, all right? So it's fatty deposits that, that build up in the retina. And what happens is that it's, it's similar to how cholesterol clogs our hearts. So we reduce blood flow, causes inflammation, and the cells can't metabolize and respirate. So it reduces the blood flow. So what, uh, what this therapy does is it helps break down the drusen. It's a very powerful antioxidant. We talked about that necessity. Macular degeneration is an accelerated aging condition of, of the retina and the macula. It controls inflammation of the macula. We know, again, it's, it's neuroprotective for the macula and the optic nerve in the retina. And as we talked about earlier, prevents neovascularization or also called angiogenesis. And that process simply stated is where the blood flow to the macula is decreased because this drusen clogs the environment up so much and we have the blood vessels start to break down and it's called, um, you know, they, they, they start to attenuate, attenuate and they basically get clogged or break their pipes, right? The blood vessels are tubes and these tubes, when they lose functions because they either break or they get clogged, right? That's when you can't get blood flow through. So what happens is we have new blood vessel growth because the body needs to get oxygen to the eyes. So what happens is when using uh, medical cannabis or CBD, the, the body improves the blood flow and breaks down the drusen, improving the vascular function of the eye. Therefore, the body does not need to have or grow these new blood vessels in an attempt to try to provide more oxygen and nutrition to the retina. Okay, that makes sense. So we're basically arresting or slowing in the, at least in reducing the probability of moving from dry macular generation to wet macular generation, which as of course we know is bleeding. So again, we talk a little bit about the receptor sites. Again, so really quick, I wanna mention here. So in, so the, the cannabis, hemp, CBD, uh, all the products that contain, contain these phytocannabinoids, again, endocannabinoids are produced in our body. We produce these naturally. Uh, then we have these phyto cannabinoids that we get from plants, right? Cannabis, hemp, stuff like that. So the two main components that are, are getting the most attention these days are CBD, cannabidiol, and THC, right? THC is the stuff that makes you feel high if you smoke a joint or do any indulge in either medical or recreational cannabis. And then there's CBD, which is uh, the cannabinoids found in, in, in the body. That, um, that don't make you high. So there's CBD doesn't have any uh, intoxicating effects. Uh, THC does. Now, so you guys are aware with, with uh, the product of uh, CBD, it's legal to have 0.3 or less concentration of THC, which is considered a non-intoxicating level of THC. Now, the THC pretty much goes to the CB1 receptor sites, right? So that's in the brain and the eyes. So we do like micro dose. We're going to talk a little bit more about this in a few, but we do prefer the small amount of THC because it just assists and we know that it's going to help the transport of the CBD to the eyes and the retina. So best case is to get full spectrum CBD. Now we know some people have problems with that. They're doing drug testing or whatever, if that's still going on in your state. So we do have product that's called broad spectrum, right? Full spectrum means that it has THC in it. Broad spectrum CBD formula means it has no THC. You can also get isolates. CBD isolate will have no THC as long as it says that. But all you guys need to know is any product that has CBD that says full spectrum, that means it will have a small amount, 0.3 
percent or less of THC in it. And again, that's going to help you relax. I found that for cases of edema or fluid accumulation, it's almost critical that we make sure that we have the full spectrum because we can see the best results with that. Um, so we, wa we want to have that. So that's on the, the full spectrum versus is broad spectrum. Again, broad spectrum, no THC, full spectrum THC. We do have both. So we do offer both to, uh, to our patients. Um, okay, let's move along. So eye conditions that benefit from, from CBD or, or these, these medical cannabinoid products. Uh, wet and dry type macular degeneration, we already talked about that. Diabetic retinopathy. Guys, diabetic retinopathy is one of the most responsive uh, conditions, that, most responsive conditions to these therapies. It helps with blood sugar. It helps with uh, the bleeding. We get a lot of micro uh, hemorrhages in the eyes with diabetic retinopathy. Again, tunnel vision. We start to have night vision issues. It's amazing. Anybody with diabetic retinopathy, it's a no-brainer to be on this. Um, of course, retinitis pigmentosa, rod cone dystrophy, rod cone dystrophy, Usher syndrome, super awesome for these conditions. We talked about glaucoma. Now, here's the thing with glaucoma. A couple of years ago, there was some uh, questions going on. Uh, the glaucoma specialists and in the industry, it was believed that it was possible that CBD can elevate uh, eye pressure. So, a lot of glaucoma specialists and a lot of people in the industry were, were saying, don't, don't use CBD if you have glaucoma. Now, I have tested that for the past year and a half with my patients. We have a tonometer, which is what we actually use to, it's the puff eye test. You guys have all gone to the eye doctor and they you know, puff in your eyeball, checks your eye pressure. We have not seen that. So I took that when I was doing this, this course and actually did a, a presentation on this. So we, I have not found that. So I am not concerned. That doesn't mean you shouldn't check your eye pressure and monitor that your, yourselves. However, I am not, I'm convinced that I, I have not seen it. We've tested well over 250, probably even close to 300 patients right now with glaucoma who have been on our Canavision product. We have not seen a single case of elevated eye pressure on our products. So totally safe. Don't worry about it. But I wanted to address that because I know a lot of you guys who have uh, glaucoma may have heard that or that may be something of concern. Now, CBD, what it does is it can help regulate the, the eye pressure to some extent as long as it's full spectrum because we know that THC is, does in fact drop eye pressure. We know that. That's research been talked about. Uh, that's a confirmed medical use. Uh, if people are using um, like marijuana or, or straight on like higher levels of THC, we do recommend edibles because it lasts longer in the body. Some people do like a one-to-one -one ratio of um, you know, THC to CBD, and that'll help keep the pressure down. So you don't have to keep like vaping or smoking and you know, you don't have to get to that level. So uh, we do recommend, I had a question on that. Somebody asked about how it can help with glaucoma. So what we're really focusing on guys here, yes, it can help with the eye pressure, but most of the time we leave the eye pressure to, to the doctors, right? To the glaucoma specialists with the eye drops, the procedures. If it's early stage before surgery, before eye drops, we can use uh, full spectrum Canavision or a one-to-one -one ratio or even more sometimes two to one. Uh, some people even go to 10 to one, but that's definitely gonna make you feel uh, intoxicated which will, will, in most cases, drop the eye pressure. Um, but again, we recommend edibles for those cases because it'll keep it down as where if you vape or smoke uh, cannabis, it will, with, with high levels of THC, you're, you're, you'll have a rebound effect and your eye pressure will, will probably go back up probably within an hour or so. Um, so again, edibles will keep it down a little bit lower. Uh, move on retinal occlusions, right? There's an eye stroke or anything like that, or trauma where there's retinal bleeding or, or sudden vision loss. Uh, certainly things like um, retinal detachments or flashing. That, guys, that is one of the best things, applications that we've seen for, uh, for CBD use. We have a lot of patients who come in, they have either the visual noise or the visual snow, they call it, the static. It kind of looks like, you know, uh, I'll do that again for you. So it has visual snow and it, it, that's basically lack of coherence between the eye and the brain. So it's static, 
right? Remember like the old TVs with the antennas that used to have to like put tin foil or touch it. We didn't get a clean reception. So it helps improve the reception. Also with the hyperactivity of the retina where you get flashes or, um, you know, impending retinal detachment or retinal tear or something like that. What happens is the CBD helps reduce that inflammation. So the flashes reduce tremendously. So any of you guys are getting flashes, uh, floaters, it's been used to help very well with as well. We've had a lot of patients report that. Um, retinal bleeding and edema we talked about. Again, for edema, again, very important to get the full spectrum or sometimes if the full spectrum isn't strong enough uh, in states that it's legal, we'll sometimes recommend patients go to one to one ratio and we'll dose that accordingly depending on where you're at. And if you're interested for more guidance on that, you guys can reach out to me specifically uh, if you have a case that you're looking for with that. Uh, I'm happy to go over that with you. Um, and of course, any ocular inflammatory conditions that we know uh, that, that, that we know is indicated for, for this condition because, like we said, medical cannabis CBD is very, very effective in reducing inflammation, specifically in ophthalmic issues, uh, things like uveitis, uh, scleritis, iritis, conjunctivitis, optic neuritis, all the itises. Itis in medicine means inflammation. So anytime you see an itis at the end, uh, retinitis, pigmentosis, it means there's some level of inflammation going on that which CBD uh, can be extremely beneficial for, okay? Let's move on to usage administration. So when we have, we have two types of products that we recommend um, that we manufacture, the gummies and the, uh, the drops. So the drops, what we recommend is a little bit more potent. You take a dropper full, you fill up the dropper, which is about one milliliter, uh, which is 86 milligrams. Ours is 2,500 milligrams. That's why we get 86 milligrams per dropper full. Put it under your tongue. Try to hold it for 30 seconds if you can. Doesn't take, taste great initially, but you guys will get used to it. So hold it under your tongue for 30 seconds or until it dissolves. The longer you hold it under your tongue, the better. First week or two, it's going to be pretty nasty, but I guarantee you'll get used to it. Um, Probably not a, not a bad idea to have a Tic Tac or a breath mint after it because it, you, know, you can have a little bit of a grassy breath after it. Um, if you don't like the taste and you kind of got to chase it, what I recommend is grape juice or cranberry juice. It'll kill the taste. You won't have an issue with it. Um, even if you want to drop it in there, people are like, I can't hold it in my mouth. I can't do that. Put it in a little grape juice or cranberry juice, shoot it down. Good enough. But what happens while we recommend sublingual because it absorbs into the bloodstream that much faster and it bypasses the gut. So we want to get a fast delivery uh, through the, 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 the mucous membranes. And when we hold it under our tongue, it accelerates and increases the amount, the quantitative uh, avail bioavailability of the dose that you're taking, right? Um, the other, so again, this is 86 dose. We usually recommend between 85 to 100 milligrams per day to start is a therapeutic dose. Now with the gummies, the, the kind of, both are full spectrum, but we do have a uh, broad spectrum available for those people that want THC. The gummies, each square, each gummy square is 25 milligrams. So you need to take, you don't need to, you can do whatever you want, but we recommend that you take four uh, of, of these. So four a day of these or one dropper full of these. For people who advance or having like a lot of inflammation, we can double that. You can actually take two of these a day, two dropper fulls a day. You really can't OD on this stuff, guys. The only thing you're going to have is you may feel like a little tired. Um, it does regulate and sedate uh, hyperactive nervous system. So it regulates the sympathetic nervous system. So if you are in fight or flight or dealing with a lot of stress and anxiety and go, 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 and you have to be on and busy and stuff like that, you may want to take it in the evening because it does relax the brain a little bit. Um, some people, yes, some people don't even feel it. Like I take it in the morning and I, I'm on with my day. So other ways of taking CBD, excuse me, I have a little itch, is you, of course we can vape it or you can smoke it. Vaping is an oil, smoking is flour. Yes, oh, let me go back here. Um, we have gummies, right? I'm sorry, there's uh, oil vaping or they actually have CBD where they have um, mutated it. They basically bred out the THC. So you can actually go to dispensaries and get uh, you know, uh, flour, cannabis flour that is, has no THC in it, and you can either make it into an oil, you can make it into a, a tincture extract or smoke. We usually don't recommend smoking for the obvious harm on the lung. Um, and again, we talk here again about full spectrum being the most desired form of CBD, um, dosing minimum 75 milligrams per day of full spectrum CBD. Uh, kids, 
Um, 12 and under, we go by weight. So basically if you're 12 or under, unless you're like a big kid, we usually cut that dose in half. So kids are gonna be about 40 to 50 milligrams depending on their condition. And again, we're always titrating up the dose, which is not a bad idea. So if you have any concerns, you wanna start with about a quarter of a dropper full or one gummy. Do that for a couple days, then add one. Go to half a dropper full and two gummies and kind of build that up until you're, you're, you're feeling the, uh, the benefits of it. And again, with these products, guys, you got to give it at least six weeks, all right? That is like, people are like, oh, I took it for a week. I don't see any difference. Most people see a, a, an improvement within a week or two. Um, but for hard cases, cases where the endocannabinoid system is off or there's a major, major insufficiency of endocannabinoids or phytocannabinoids or the endocannabinoid system receptor sites need a little time to kind of spring into action, we uh, definitely recommend giving it at least six weeks before having a conversation or making a decision if it's worth continuing or not, okay? So these are our products right here, uh, the Cannavision and CBD. These are our, we have these in poster forms and we have them on our websites and everything like that. So this basically is our products. It's our, all the benefits. We have brochures about this. If you guys are interested, you can hit us up. These are on our websites, um, which you're gonna see at the end. It's uh, cannavisioncbd.com. Uh, and we also have our iHealthInstitute.com where you guys can read up, uh, get more research on these, on our products here. Um, 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 I'm umming a lot today. So other benefits of Canavision CBD. So beyond vision, what else can it do for you? I get questions all the time. So what else is it good for? Like how, how else can it help? So we know that CBD uh, and low levels of THC in full spectrum can have a very dramatic effect on lowering stress levels. It basically helps get the brain out of high beta or sympathetic nervous stress. So when you're basically like, you know, fight or flight, it deactivates the fight or flight response and pulls you into sympathetic response, which is a rest and digest or the rest and relaxation response. I'm going to hydrate. So it's going to therefore elevate mood. When we're stressed out, we're in a high beta, we're not really in a good mood. When we drop a little bit to low beta or even into high alpha, relaxed, easy, happier, peaceful, still better, more receptive, more creative. Guys, did you know that when we're stressed out, certain parts of our brain for creative problem solving actually shut down? The parts of our brain that help us figure out problems, and that's kind of what we need to do when we're dealing with stress, is to find out solutions is, is, is inhibited. Like we can't access that. So using things like meditation and Qigong we talked about last time, certainly acupuncture, um, exercise, in this case, uh, cannabis and CBD to bring down the stress response so that we just feel better, right? The happier, enjoy our life, more peaceful. What's better than that? Improve sleep. Guys, are you healing? We're gonna have a whole session on the value of sleep and why we need to sleep. But Guys, if you're not sleeping, you're not repairing, right? This is when the brain, the emotions, the physical body, your thoughts, everything goes in repair and recovery and reset mode, right? We heal when we sleep. If you're not sleeping, well, your body is going to generate. It's simple as that. And there are very few better ways than the Cannavision to help regulate sleep. Sometimes we need to add to that. We need to deal with things like GABA or serotonin, work with neurotransmitters, uh, GABA is our like anxiety and insomnia. So often when we see insomnia, again, we'll talk more about this when we talk about sleep and the role of sleep and vision, uh, is we're really looking at regulating serotonin and GABA. Those are the two big neurotransmitters that, that we look to help. There can also be adrenal issues or circadian rhythm issues. So we're going to get into all this stuff when we talk about the role of sleep, uh, probably in about a month or so. Not the next session, we're going to be talking about uh, oxygen and hyperbaric and the role of oxygen therapies for vision. Uh, and we're going to talk about what's worked and what I've done and works when it doesn't work. So sleep, really big issue. Um, make sure you're getting your sleep. If you're having a problem with sleep, um, some of you might be doing melatonin. Melatonin plus CBD is very, very effective. Uh, add the Qigong exercises and you're, you're basically, it's very simple to reestablish your, your sleep issues. And if you have any questions about that, again, feel free to reach out to me. Relieves pain because reducing inflammation. Uh, CBD helps modulate, regulate the, the pain receptor sites in the body. So you're going to feel less pain, right? It's better than that. Not only physical pain, but emotional pain. 
So that means your reactivity, your susceptibility to emotional stress and triggering, right? Uh, during the time of this presentation, there's a lot going on with politics, with COVID. Uh, there's a lot of people under a lot of stress. We have jobs in the economy. So a lot of people under a lot of stress. Guys, we can't keep this on the, strep, on the shelves. Our patients are using it. Uh, they're tr having them try it. And it's, it's, it's tremendous in terms of its benefit, especially for anxiety, depression, mood regulation, super, super uh, effective there, especially with anxiety. Um, reduces blood sugar, all right? So this is, this is important, guys. We talked about this with diabetes. So if you're having blood sugar issues, you're diabetic, you're eating a lot, um, we combine this with green tea, actually, but don't take it at the same time because green tea and coffee has alkaloids. Don't take any supplements, especially these products, with coffee or green tea or white tea, because the alkaloids will bind to that and you won't get use of the, the, the uh, phytocannabinoids. So, but if you take them separately, say you take like, you know, your CBD uh, dose early and then a little bit later in the day, you start up with your green tea, that is a really good, easy way to start addressing. Of course, you need to watch your, your carb intake and your sugar intake, but it's really gonna help regulate your blood sugar Add uh, fish oils or flaxseed oil to that, an omega-3 DHA, really, really beneficial. Um, and it enhances performance, athletic performance, mental performance. Why? Because you're less stressed, the inflammation's down, your body's harmonized, your endocannabinoid system has been tonified and toned. So when we're tuned and toned, our body's going to perform better physically, emotionally, mentally, cognitively, all around. We're just going to show up better. Okay, um, promotes bone regrowth. There's some new research that's showing all the endocannabinoids are in the bones and in the stem cells in the marrow. So uh, CBD products, good CBD products, uh, will absolutely help with bone regrowth. People like osteopenia and osteoarthritis and osteoporosis. Uh, improves skin health, right? A lot of people have acne, eczema, psoriasis, um, anything, anything like that really, really can help. Actually, I didn't really expect to see that, but I had some patients report back to me, tell me it really helped with their skin, the psoriasis, eczema, you know, anti-inflammatory. Also, uh, acne seems to be helping as well with, uh, with acne. Uh, reduces muscle spasms. So a lot of people get cramps and muscle spasms. Uh, it relaxes the smooth muscles. So we use this with magnesium, right? We take, uh, uh, we use a product called Natural Calm. So we add a little magnesium, potassium. Also, our vision mints uh, have magnesium, potassium in that. So if people have muscle spasms. We are obviously having them hydrate a little bit more, but we use the Canavision, and we have them use the vision mints, which is primarily a very bioavailable source of magnesium and potassium. We also know it inhibits bacterial growth. So people who are prone to bacterial infections, yeast infections, it's also a yeast inhibitor. So yeast infections, bacterial infections, um, and overall immune, immune support, we talked about myself. So right now, again, we're dealing with the COVID situation. So I, my experience is that it's really supporting the immune system, which also helps the body with virus protection against viruses. So uh, virus also allergies, that's a new thing we saw as well the last year. I really didn't know if it was gonna have an effect on my patients with allergies, but my patients who've been taking Canavision uh, had a much easier time this spring, and now we're entering the fall up here in New Jersey where ragweeds are a big issue. So people are getting like swollen eyes and scratchy throats and stuff like that. So with that, we have them doing the LipoVision eye drops uh, where that helps create a protective barrier for the pollens. And we take the LipoVision eye drops. We use the Canavision. We use a product called Dehist. That's a product we use. And we also increase vitamin C levels because vitamin C is one of the most natural antihistamines. So if you combine Canavision with vitamin C, I use like liposomal vitamin C, which is uh, vitamin C in fat. Again, that's liposomal or lipospheric vitamin C. You guys can check that out on Amazon. Best form of vitamin C. Uh, or of course, you can get IV vitamin C. So absolutely supports immune function as we talked about. So let's move on. Uh, so in conclusion, we can see here that medical cannabis and specifically CBD uh, as found in, in our Canavision product can be an effective treatment for neurodegenerative eye conditions through neuroprotection, through antioxidant uh, protection, through uh, increasing blood flow, anti-inflammatory, 
Uh, it also helps, again, with uh, night vision, dark adaptation, prevention from wet macular degeneration, angiogenesis and neovascularization, the uh, advancement of wet macular degeneration, also help controlling eye pressure, uh, protecting the integrity of the optic nerve. Remember, the eye, with glaucoma, eye doctors focus on the eye pressure. They don't do anything for the optic nerve. Catavision can really help support the optic nerve very, very effectively. Uh, various forms of medical cannabis treatment are becoming more and more popular. Things like eye drops are being investigated, um, THC, CBD eye drops. Right now, they're still too acidic, so they're working on that, still, still in research phases. They are very fast acting, right? Low side effects, meaning they're safe and effective. They're very bioavailable. The body likes it. There's no side effects. It doesn't mess you up, right? Um, so it helps people of all ages. We got kids. I got like five, four, five-year-olds who are taking this stuff. And I got people who are 95 taking this, taking our product. So whether it's acute, whether it's chronic, whether it's traumatic, whether it's longstanding, whether you're just getting it, whether you've had it for 50 years, there's a lot that we can do for these, uh, these eye conditions using um, you know, these, these products. So as usual, you guys know, your vision is our mission. We're always here to help you. This information that we've given you guys today are tools, right? All we're, we're about just giving you guys tools. You, some of you guys are gonna use all of them. Some of you guys are gonna use one of them. We don't, I don't care. My hope is that you will find and resonate with some of the tools that we're giving you guys and some of these suggestions. And again, if you guys want, you could comment down in the box. Um, those of you guys watching on a replay, uh, comment in the box below. Uh, if you're on our Facebook group, tag me if you can. If you're, over, if you're starting, if you're in our group and you're asking questions, uh, Dr. Rosenfarb, AccuVision community, uh, please tag me. So this way I can get an alert that you're asking a question. Uh, you're also welcome to email us. You're welcome to call our office. Here are our websites, our phone numbers here. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us anytime. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Really exciting information on CBD, endocannabinoid system. And thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. And we look forward to next week's presentation, or in two weeks rather. In two weeks, our next presentation is going to be on the benefits of oxidative therapies and oxygen therapies, uh, what works, what doesn't work. I'm gonna talk about hyperbaric oxygen. We're gonna go back and talk a little bit more about the retina being the highest oxygen consuming tissue in the whole body, which means that oxygen levels in systemically and locally in the retina are critical. How do we support that in order to improve and maintain your vision? So take care, guys. Have a great morning, evening, afternoon, whenever you're watching this. Feel free to reach out to us with any questions you have. Take care. Bye-bye.